And guys, we are going to start right with the Eagles in a game that was a blowout. And we saw this story before. We still got fed the headlines all, uh, all week. It's hard to beat a team three times over and over again. It was not very hard yeah. for the Philadelphia Eagles to beat the Giants for the third time. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was not. That, that dang New York media was no, wrong. No, they, they were. Yes. They were. Yeah. People that said they thought the Giants might cover um, were wrong. Yes. Uh, people that, like uh, like Mike Florio, that picked them to win outright. Well, Ooh. Could be me. Or would it be wrong? Um, people that thought it had a chance to be the lowest scoring game of the weekend, which I did. We're wrong. <laughs> well, we're well, wrong. well, well it almost, they did they yeah. part. They did. They <laughs> forgot about one thing. Um, <laughs> no, uh, the, I mean, just a dominating performance from from start to finish. Like um, it was what was it? Thirty eight seven. Thirty eight seven. Thirty eight seven. And honestly, didn't feel that close. No. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, like the, it wasn't as close Eagles as the score. Took their foot off the gas. I mean, I mean, the game kind of unwound exactly to script in that it followed the exact script of the 48-22 game yes. that we saw six weeks ago where Giants have a bottom three rush defense and the Eagles did whatever they wanted on the ground. And then the big thing to me was the Eagles defense, which has been a little hit and miss the past couple months with injuries. Well, all those guys are back outside of Avante Maddox and they just looked incredible. And uh, if you're Brock Purdy, you've got to be a little worried. Yeah, I mean, look, the fact is is that the if there's been an Achilles heel for the Eagles' defense this year, it's been their rush defense. To your, specifically about the up-and-down nature of the Eagles' defense, yeah. Jay, to your point. It's really been – because Slay and Bradbury have played great all year long. It's really – could they run the ball? Could the Giants, with Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley, could they effectively run the ball against the Eagles? And the answer in this game was no. No. I mean, they couldn't. You know, they, they saw the Vikings game and they're like, oh, we're going to stop that. We're going to actually play defense. We're going to we're going to um, play. You know, we're going to have gap dis- discipline, and uh, you're not going to do any of the cute stuff. And so, Barkley nine for sixty one. We talked on last week's show that we like the under on his rush attempts. It was fifteen and a half for Barkley, so that cashes. Daniel Jones just six for twenty four on the ground again. Um, they just, you know, and then once the game got away from, it's hard to. Yeah, quote unquote, established the People run. might look at the, the fact that the Giants, they did average 5.9 yards per carry on the ground, but a lot of that is just the 39 yarder from Saquon yeah. when the game was already When the game was over. There. Yeah, they could have, yeah. they weren't running the ball efficiently early. And also, yeah, when you're down 28 nothing like that, then you're just not going to be able runs. to run the ball. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. And the efficiency from Jalen Hurts, once again, I mean, 16 to 24, <laughs> throws for two touchdowns, runs for another one. This is kind yeah. of, Lawrence, this has been the story with Jalen Hurts all yeah. year is the balance of the throwing and the efficient running. Yeah, and I think like we talked, we all talked about last week we expected him to get back on track we didn't really take it too much consideration how you know he looked bad against the Giants backups but that was weeks that was his first time playing in weeks he was getting warmed up and he looked he, he wasn't warmed up in this game he was hot uh, only took him 154 passing yards to do it because the defense came to play but Jalen Hurts he, he ready to go man uh, hurts on oh I'm sorry 20 to 40 Hurts, whatever. Hurts was balling. Y'all got it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he looked like he looked like the exact same guy. And the, the fear was that he would look like the Week 18 guy. No, extra week of rest in a game that meant everything. Oh, uh, yeah, he was just Jalen Hurts. And he, he looked like somebody's ride or die. Yeah, somebody's fantasy might, ride or die. That somebody that. at the beginning of the season said could take a J- <laughs> Josh Allen. Like, first game of the season, preseason game. Football Night in America, somebody, and by somebody I mean me. Me. I it was Maria Tyler. <laughs> no, nope, it was totally me. Okay. Jason Garrett? Um, okay. That said, uh, yeah, um, Josh, he can take a Josh Allen year three like leap with the addition of A.J. Brown, that offensive line, that schedule, and another year in Sirianni's system. He has the ability to, to, to become the number one quarterback in fantasy, to have that MVP like season. And. He's done that. I don't think he's going to win the MVP. I think it's going to be Mahomes because yeah. he missed those two games. But uh, he legitimately was it was and will continue to be in the conversation. And he looked like Jalen Hurts. He didn't look hurt. That's the most important thing, I think, for Philly fans and uh, the Eagles uh, skill players is that he looks 100% healthy. Um, Boston Scott. Boston Scott, anytime touchdown. Like, it was like – I think I tweeted this out. Death taxes and Boston Scott anytime touchdown. We talked about that. Uh, I feel like that was Nick, so. they, Nick Sirianni giving him that carries like Nick yeah. Sirianni breaking the fourth wall. It was like a weird touchdown. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was like, oh, I know this he, is a he thing. Definitely so let's do it. He yes. definitely knew. He definitely knew. They got that off there. Hell, all the running backs from the Eagles was getting off. 
112 rushing yards for Gainwell, 90 for Sanders. Of course, uh, Boston Scott gets his 11th TD against the Giants just to make us all happy on social media there. Now, it'll be tougher, obviously, to run that ball against the 49ers, but we talked about this last week. You could throw against the Niners. You can throw deep on the Niners. You can throw deep. Just don't throw no interceptions. You feel me? And I don't think that Jalen Hurts is going to be as giving as, uh, you know, Dak Prescott and the Cowboys were. So it'll be a little switch up. But what we do know about the Eagles offense, they could do it every type of way. Like A.J. Brown, almost 1,500 receiving yards. Slim Reaper uh, with 1,200. You got Goddard with set. So they could get it. Like, they could go Jekyll and Hyde on you as far as their offense goes. That's probably what they'll have to do against the Niners. Really versatile offense. There's no question about that. And you just said, you know, like the Boston Scott thing was a sort of acknowledgement. Like, you know, Nick Sirianni just kind of knows. I feel like what you're saying is that Nick Sirianni knows what he's doing. Yes, he does know what he's doing. Good night overall uh, from a content perspective uh-huh. from Nick Sirianni. The best. With the grin at the camera and then his moment down the sideline as well, which I don't think we can repeat at noon on Peacock. But he uh, <laughs> he was magnificent uh, in that team. I mean, yeah, they've been the best team in the NFC all year and now they get a home game to go to the Super If there's Bowl. one thing that's disappointing about the Eagles, and really the, there's only one thing, it's this. It's that on Football Night in America, I had to give a pick for this game. I had to give some some you know betting props, and so I said per bet MGM, you know, I said, look, I like two things in this game. I like the over on Devonte Smith, sixty five and a half receiving yards. I like the over on Richie James, forty five and a half uh, receiving yards. So with Devonte Smith, you know, one of my argument was was that he's hit, he's had at least sixty seven yards in five of the last six games. We expect them to be able to throw. Dory Jackson probably sees a little bit more of uh, A.J. Brown than he does. Devontae Smith is going to see some man-to-man. He's, got, he's had at least, uh, I believe, at least eight targets in nine straight games. Like, really, Devontae Smith has had that, you know, um, and he hit the number. He hit the number, except um, the last reception that he got, which is like a six-yard reception, Stupid Eagles had like an illegal man downfield until it gets called back. And Devontae Smith finishes with 61 yards, not the 66 I needed for him to cover the over. That's what sucks, Jay Croucher. That's what sucks about that oh. Eagles win is that Smith did not cover. It's good you moved past it, though. Yeah, no. you yeah, you're over it. That's the best my part. Last, it was my last football night in America for the year. And I, you know, just People only remember the last Maybe one forever. Well. We don't know. We're going into a long offseason. Oh, you never know. You, you should have went with a Daniel Jones prop. <laughs> I, I was very close to I was very close to um, taking uh, giving the sake it was one of those three it was those two plus the Saquon Barkley under on the rushing yeah. so I hit two of the three that I gave out on this show um, but Rodney Harrison was going to talk up AJ Brown in the segment before and they liked you know when I told them I was thinking about this Devonte Smith over they were like yeah you know could you help us out here it'd be good transition Rodney's going to talk AJ Brown and then you'll talk Devonte Smith and well what are you going to do. <laughs> But well, it was the good the right news play, is Smith over AJ Brown. There you go. That was the, the Richie right James play, play does yes. hit. Richie, Richie James, James seven catches, fifty-one yards. Like we said, Daniel Jones really struggled in this one, guys. And Saquon only nine carries because they needed to go to a throw script. So mm-hmm. a an interesting offseason ahead for the Giants. Barkley and Jones, both free agents, assuming they'll probably franchise tag one and try to work an extension with the other. But we'll see where this Giants offense goes under yeah. Brian Dable. I think with Jones, like he's, he wasn't, he's not as good as he was in the Minnesota game. He's yes. not as bad as he was in the Philadelphia game. He's in between. He's probably you know slightly worse quarterback than Dak Prescott. Uh, and in right. that kind of Kirk Cousins, Derek Carr type of type of mold, which is like every Giants fan would have taken that from Daniel Jones before the season. Uh, no one thought he would be on the team next year, and now he looks like a very solid quarterback. The fifth year a thousand, a thousand percent, by the way. Uh, Mike Garofalo, who uh, reports for NFL Network, tweeted this out, uh, that uh, Giants general manager Joe Shane, quote, we'd like Daniel to be here. He notes that there's a, quote, business side to it, Mm-mm. but, quote, he's done everything we've asked him. That's uh, the Giants general manager on Daniel Jones, according to NFL Network. And I would think the deal gets done. I'll tell you this. It's interesting. Um, I don't know if this is conventional wisdom, but if you told me that of those two players, Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones, hey, by the way, the Giants are going to franchise tag one of them, I feel like it's got to be Jones. 100%. I feel like it's got to be Jones over Barkley, even though I get Barkley's the bigger name and Maybe and, and he's a better running back among all running backs than Daniel Jones is a quarterback yes. among all quarterbacks. But again, just replacement level. I mean, they got good production from you know Matt Breida this year when they needed to. Like they the value of a quarterback, right? It's just so the value of a quarterback. So, 
But uh, my expectation is that both guys are back, and both guys should be popular fantasy picks next season. Barkley will be a top 10 guy, um, and Daniel Jones will be a high-end QB2 kind of, you know, trendy sleeper in, the, in that Kirk Cousins, Derek Carr range. All right, our last game here, fellas. The Chiefs take care of business against Jacksonville, but a bit of a scare as Patrick Mahomes is dealing with a high ankle sprain. Mahomes after the a game. A bit of a scare. <laughs> a bit of a scare. Uh, he did come back to the game, though. I'm sure he had some help in the locker room at halftime. Oh. Mahomes after the game says, it feels better than I thought it was going to be now. I'll hop right in the treatment and try to do whatever I can to be close to 100% by next week. I don't think he's going to be close to 100%. No, that maybe that's a, 65 That's a bad one. I mean, right now, this is incredible. Like, the line on BetMGM, it's pick. Kansas City home to the Bengals. Everything. And to give you an idea of this, like, Kansas City and Buffalo basically rated at the same level a week ago. Buffalo were minus six-point favorites at home. That's what it closed against Cincinnati. And now there's been a six-point swing where now it's pick because people think that Mahomes either may not play. I think he'll play. Yeah, he'll but he just yeah. he'll be that limited. And the difference between... Superman, fully healthy Patrick Mahomes, and Patrick Mahomes on one leg who can barely run a, a running back stretch play, yeah. um, which was tough to watch. He's not calling those plays, Andy Reid, for the place. We don't want to see Patrick yeah. Mahomes limping yeah. to hand off to Jarek McKinnon. So that's it's a crazy line. I think that it, the Chiefs will probably end up being one and a half point favorites or so. I think it'll move in the direction of the Chiefs. But yeah, it's just that the game hinges on Mahomes' health. I'll say, he, he looked okay in the second half for a guy with one leg. He's just yeah. that good. And Mahomes with one leg is still better than 95% of the quarterbacks <laughs> in the NFL, especially, yes, <laughs> uh, especially given Andy Reid uh, coaching. Look, now, again, I, I think uh, he'll find Kelsey early and often. I mean, that's, you know, just a monster game for Kelsey. We talked about that on Football Night in America that we expected a huge game from him and how the Jaguars give him the third most fantasy, third most receiving yards to opposing tight ends. He has 98 Kelsey does for on 14 receptions and the two touchdowns in this one, including one from Chad Henney. Chad Henney revenge game. Yes, Hashtag sir. revenge yes, game. Henney, of course, was a Jaguar from 2012 to 2017. Played 31 games for them, 22 starts. Chad Henney exacting a revenge against Jacksonville. <laughs> you, you can't stop Chad Henney. You can only hope to contain him. Yeah, I mean, that was the game. Is Chad Henney going, what, 98 yards? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Touchdowns, right? Like, that, that's your game. You can't allow you can't, Chad you Henney to do that and no. expect to get to the AFC title game. The, the, the Chiefs were the Chiefs. I think the only other takeaway from this game, and, like, again, we'll, we'll, we'll have a show on Thursday where we'll break down the championship games and we'll talk. We'll probably have a lot better idea of what Mahomes' status is and we can break it down there. But I think the, the running game is sort of interesting, right? McKinnon plays 64% of the snaps, runs 19 routes, compared with just 36% of the snaps for Isaiah Pacheco and 11 routes. So McKinnon was on the field a lot more, but Pacheco is the guy that has the better fantasy day. 12 for 95, he catches a ball as well. McKinnon doesn't do much, um, just, 11 for, uh, just 11 for 25 on the ground. Yep. Looking at the Jag side, I mean... Wasted opportunity. It was right there for them, the Jags. When Henny came into the game, the live line on BetMGM was close to pick. The Jags were almost a coin flip to go to the AFC title game, which, considering they were 3-7 and seven or whatever they were, is insane. But, I mean, Kirk is so close to catching the deep bomb. Just the yeah. game of almost. Trevor Lawrence, I mean, he was probably better than he was the past two games, but still not great. On the ground, they're efficient. They just don't have the opportunity to run that much because they're trailing. So just a, an almost game for the Jags, Lawrence. Yeah, it was, you know, it just just not their time, really. Like, you, they had everything going for them. Patrick Mahomes goes out for a little bit. You got Chad Henney, but then, like you said, you can't stop Chad Henney. You can only hold the container. Uh, Lawrence is good. Can't give up a 98 yard, <laughs> you can't give up a 98-yard drive to a backup quarterback. You just no. can't if you're the Jaguars. No, it's not. Nah, it can't, especially for a touchdown, right? Um First loss for Trevor Lawrence on a Saturday. So there you go. That's a, a big over. milestone. High school, college, and or pro. ETN kind of saved his day fantasy-wise fantasy with the touchdown there uh, late in the game. But, again, not, not much there. Uh, they, they had their chances. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched or at least – being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.